In this video, you're gonna learn how to get BRR deals from Harvey, the person who taught us how to get BRR deals. He's done over 100 deals over the past 10 years and his knowledge is second to none. We went to his on patch day in the Northeast to film the majority of it for you guys. People have paid 400 pounds just to be on this on patch day. So make sure you're taking notes because there's a lot of information in this video. You're gonna see Harvey costing up a refurb live. You're gonna learn the art of offering without offering. There's gonna be a live call with an agent and then afterwards he breaks down the psychology behind the call. So again, make sure you're taking notes because there's a lot of gems in this one. If you're interested in joining the next on patch day, we'll put a link in the description. We try to attend every single one. So hopefully the next one we'll see you there. Harvey usually covers calls with agents, pricing up refurbs, live viewings, uh, going to see some of Harvey's projects. Plus he pays for lunch for everyone and much, much more. So yeah, click the link and it'll be good to see you there. So with that being said, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button and let's get into the video. So this is something you would be at sell, which is online, because what you'd be selling to somebody is, look, this needs a full refurbishment. So straight away, when I'm looking at this deal here, if that is really, really smooth wallpaper, I'd probably paint over that. But the reality is you've got this cladding up, so that's got to be ripped off. It could potentially rip that off, so you probably have to strip the wallpaper. That's an old light fitting, but that's a new plug. So what I'm looking at in this room is like, look out for the plugs, look out, like, see what the skirting's like. So I'm looking there, that's a pretty new modernist plug. There's no thing that stands out in, in this room at the moment that it could be a rewire. These fireplaces could potentially be back boilers, but that doesn't look like that either. And that's gonna need a plaster and new carpets, that, that room now. So new carpets for that, let's say, let's go a bit more chunkier, 1,700 quid. Flooring and carpets, there's loads of cladding everywhere. So you're gonna need a full plaster, I'd say. So to say 1,500 quid for the full ripper, plus three and a half grand for the plastering. That's gone up dramatically. We used to get a house plaster for two and a half grand pre-COVID. If I was doing this refurb here, I'd look at these ceilings. Look, there are taxi. I'd, I'd say plaster the walls, forget the ceilings. It would look slightly better with the ceilings, but a, a surveyor's not gonna walk in and go, oh, the ceilings didn't get plastered. They're gonna walk in, see fresh plastered walls. It's gonna be white. The design of a property outweighs the end, the like, finish spec. This is probably gonna run in already. I can see it to be a higher refurb than you probably wanna take on for a first one because all this sort of glass stuff along here as well, that's difficult. You wanna box that in and make that, just, I don't know, it just looks 1970s to me. So let's say you're gonna look at about three and a half grand, maybe even four grand by the time you've done some boxing in for like the plastering and stuff like that and some stud stuff. Good thing again, what I'm looking at here is radiators. So what I look at when I'm looking at these to analyze these online is here, look, that there, you can see it's a new radiator. Look at the pipes. That's usually a really, really good indicator as well. Half, like the, the mill of the pipes. You get thin piping, can be okay, but often it needs to be changed, especially when you change a new boiler. If it's got plastic pipe, isn't, even though it's not as good as copper pipe, you know it's new because it's a new, newer thin plastic piping. So again, you'll think, okay, that's been probably re-piped in there quite a bit. So heating for me looks like it's gonna be okay. What you need to try and do is find the door number of that property. Once you've got the door number, you can go onto the EPC and find out where the boiler's at. But let's just assume at the moment the boiler looks all right because it looks like it's new radiators. This sort of wallpaper, I wouldn't paint over. Do you know that like bubbly sort of stuff? Sometimes the wood, it depends on budgets. You could do a full replaster which is gonna cost you three and a half grand, and you could do a kitchen that costs you three and a half grand. I guarantee you'll get a stronger valuation with the kitchen being done than you would the plastering. You could do damp work, which is unsafe, or rewires are the worst, because they cost a couple of grand to do, but because they're hidden, it doesn't influence their mind, the, the surveyor's minds, or the person renting it. If you walk in, it's got a really nice looking kitchen and a really nice looking bathroom, forget the little nuances on the finish, we'll show you some of the finishes we do. And a lot of people go, wow, we're like, you short? Sure? Like, yeah, I'm fucking really short. Sure. We've rented hundreds of properties, for years. It needed to be safe, but you don't need to be super high end on finishes. Doors look decent, that's a big one. These internal doors, I'd keep these and just put new handles on these. Downstairs needed doors, upstairs could be kept. So doors and like carpentry and woodwork, little bits and bobs in there, probably another 500 quid say, probably slightly less. You'd rather be a bit more over than under. That's a warning sign now, so that is a massive one. That plug there, that is out of regs. So that's hundreds, that is nearly, unless that's an old, sometimes they'd leave them on the wall and they don't work anymore. They just didn't take them off because they didn't want a hole in the wall. But if that's a working plug, that 100% needs a rewire. See these plugs are high off the wall, they have to be so high off the floor because when you plug a plug in, the wire bends down. If the wire keeps on bending down, it's gonna eventually compromise the wire and then cause a fire. So that probably needs a rewire. You're probably looking at around two and a half, three grand now for three grand. Again, we used to get these for two grand before. See, this sort of stuff, these, these are harder because that just looks so dated, but what do you do with that? Smash that up. 
yeah, just smash it out, but in the gap there, like, again, when you're plastering, but then this really adds to the plastering costs. So realistically, you probably would just break that out, but then if you break that out, you're going to add probably... Yeah, or exactly that. Sec second option is that we've painted over a few of these, and sometimes they come out really looking good, and other times they come out just looking like fucking painted a turd, you know? Like, I think if you painted that uh, with really nice handles on that, you might get away with it. Let's say we took that out anyway. The extra cost of taking that out and getting it replastered is probably going to add another 500 quid. Probably less, but as I said, you want to over egg these a little bit more than anything. Oh, shower. I've got an on sweet in this room. <laughs> I think that's random, isn't it? I'll just put a wall around that and make that on on suite. Like they've kind of done the work for you, for you there a little bit. Again, that needs a new shower and stuff like that in there. Wow, that is random, isn't it? I imagine the bathroom's behind that. Especially when you're going direct to vendor, the more photos you've got, the more understanding. Like ask the vendor to give you, like just draw out the, like the, the layout of it and the floor plans and things like that. Don't have to be really accurate, but the more understanding where you can get where things is, the more you can then cost stuff. Wow, well, that definitely needs changes, doesn't it? The toilet's all right, so this green kind of went out of fashion a little while ago, so you definitely would get that ripped out. Yeah, carpet in the, in the bathroom, yeah. <laughs> so look, new bathroom, probably around two and a half K. Probably get it done for two K, but just be a little bit heavier, especially if you've not got connections as well. Like when I'm showing you the, the prices I show you on my list are the prices I aim to get things done for. I don't always get them done for that price. It's a price I know should be pretty fair based on a fair labor rate but it is a challenge to always get them done. So I would use them prices and go slightly above those. And then if you come in lower, you've had a bonus. And if you don't, you've also had a bonus because then you've not got a budget. But small garden, you've got to think of this as well. This does have an impact on valuations gardens. So that other one we see for 150, that's got a really nice garden. I didn't used to think it did, but it does. Like there was a property on an estate I really liked a little while ago. And I was going, why is this not sold? Like everything's flying off for like 110s, 115s. It was on for 95 and it was nearly just there. But because it, I spoke to the agent, he said, because it's just nearly there, but it's rough around the edges. Like it's kind of okay, but nearly there. And with the garden, they were struggling to sell it. It took them a while to sell. It wasn't quite cheap enough for us to buy it. But, uh, so yeah, that potentially could have an impact. Again, the windows look pretty decent. Oh, the garden looks better from that angle saying that. It's a better sized garden. So I would get rid of that, get rid of this. So again, probably looking at another couple hundred quid, maybe another 300 quid added on just uh, maybe 400 quid to sort the garden out. I look along here, so I look along the, the roof line. So I'm looking along here to see, these pictures are not great for this. But again, this is why you'd ask the question, especially director vendor, what's the, like, can you describe it to me? Is there a sag in the roof? Do the tiles look aging? Is there moss on the chart tiles? Things like this. So this gutter in, all this looks newish. That downpipe looks like that could be an asbestos downpipe. Not definitely, no, it is plastic, you can see there. But when you get them old ones that are not plastic, they're often asbestos. They can be left, but they're more expensive if you don't leave them and take them out. So what I do with them old asbestos ones is I just paint them, because they can be painted. Again, this goes back to the for sake of it. For the sake of it, you might as well do this. No, for the sake of it, I might as well not. It's 400 quid to do some guttering and a downpipe. Paint it, it could cost me 100 quid to paint, or 400 quid to change it. I've never had a tenant or a surveyor come out and go, oh, there's brand new guttering on there, I'm gonna rent that property for 100 pound more. As long as you take your eye off it, so when you paint it, if it looks like old and flaky paint, if you paint it, it takes the eye off it. The soffit and fascias look decent on this. The downpipe looks okay. Windows again from the back look good. So it's good you've got a back angle from that because that's often what you won't get on right move. But again, if you're going direct to vendor, how are you negotiate with a direct to vendor without viewing it? You say to them, give me as many photos as you can. I did videos as well, and I need you to go through this checklist of things. The more things you can check off, the more accurate I can be with my, with my offer. We're not gonna come and view this until we can understand whether or not we can get a price that fits. So as soon as we can understand we can get a price that fits, we'll get someone to view it. But that offer obviously is gonna be subject to you giving me as much information as you can. It's, it's a reasonable request. So yeah, the front of the property looks okay. That's a weird door on the side, but that all looks all right, probably needs a little bit of tidy up around there. You, you always want to think about that first walk into a property and having that tidy because that again does have, a, does have an influence on there. Add another 50 quid to, with the front and everything. Let's go back to the kitchen. Definitely need a new kitchen. I want to see the floor plans on this. Yeah, so again, if there's margin in this, it's where you have to make the decision. If that bits with that cladding that I said probably needs boxing in, I'll just take that out and add that as a big op open plan kitchen diner. Be so much better and i'd have probably units all the way along this wall to here and across here so it'd be just a really nice l-shaped kitchen it's a nice kitchen diner space so yeah that looks like that divider there looks like this dividing wall here because that looks like the kitchen behind it 
So that's brilliant. That's actually better because I'll just rip that wall out and make it a big open plan kitchen diner. People like bigger kitchens today, especially kitchen diners. That kitchen is far too small for a free bed. Probably looking with getting that kitchen aligned and sorted about four grand, I'd say. So that puts me at about an 18 grand budget straight away. Put a contingency on top of that as well. Even when I looked at that, it's a 20 grand plus refurb straight away. And that's if it doesn't need a new boiler. I think it needs a rewire. I would probably avoid that level straight away unless you've got a bit more experience. When you look on the EPC, what we're looking for here is down here, it'll, it'll tell us what needs doing. So cavity walls, average. You know the insulation's okay-ish. It's got insulation in the loft. Fully double glazed, you know the double glazing is decent. They always call it average with double glazing, by the way, because it's not triple glazing. Triple glazing is the one that gets good, but double glazing, it does a job for rentals. Boiler and radiators, good. So, okay, we, we high probability. It might have an old style boiler in there, but it's high probability that's gonna be a decent boiler. It's because it's on the EPC. So we know we don't have to have a boiler on there. So many people say to me, how can you analyze these deals online? The information's there for you. So you, you can get, unless it's a massive, massive, massive refurb, you can get so accurate on, on this. This will be a bit harder because there is a few variables with this cladding and all this sort of stuff. But I would say 20 grand refurb. I think that's a rewire because that plug was on the floor. But if I was speaking to a direct vendor, I'd say to him, is that plug a decommissioned plug or is that actually an active plug? If he says it's an active plug, 100% rewire. If he says it's nice, it's an old one, we didn't take it out when it got rewired. But that's the question you asked him, mate. When was the last time you've done major works on a property? Has it been rewired have you done this have you done that and often if they've lived there for a while they'll be able to give you these answers anyway agents won't let's go back to the analyzer it's 120 grand i reckon give yourself at least probably a 22k budget on that and i said 18 a minute ago but you definitely want to be a little bit higher my train of thought is if i'm going to spend 22 grand refurbs are harder just pure and simple they're harder to do than a 10 grand refurb because it's just more moving parts take longer the longer they take the more the more variabilities you've got of things going wrong, the more chance you've got a builder squeezing other jobs in. Like if a builder can squeeze a job in in three weeks and turn it around, usually they can just smash it out. But if it's a longer job, they always find other little jobs in between and some of their regular customers come up with something. So you've got so many variables that can go wrong the bigger the refurb is. So right now Harvey's got everyone doing an exercise where they're working out what the refurb cost is for one of Harvey's deals from the video. And then afterwards, we're gonna to go to that actual deal, see if the workers are accurate from uh, the deal that Harvey took on. So there's a property on the market at the moment that uh, offers over. Callum was asking me, can you go in there and offer below if it says offers over? I said, so it's all about the psychology behind how you position, how you say that. So you'd say, look, I know it says offers over, but would they maybe be open to it? Say, so, look, I've done the numbers, I've crunched them, and we're probably gonna be more around here, so I don't wanna offer them at the moment because it says offers over. And then you get a gauge from them to see where they're at. Well, you might be able to give them a cheeky offer. Okay, what if I offered this much? You're not offending them, so you're not offering, you're just saying, look, I've done numbers. I see they said it's offers over, but I, I'm only coming to around here. Have you got any more data for me that suggests what could be more? Have you got right move plus that maybe is a recent sale that the comparable's higher than the one I'm looking at? Does it need less work? Am I looking at this thinking it needs less work? And, and again, that justifies why you're saying, I probably can only be at around 80 or 75. So I'm not gonna offer because they want offers over. And you just gauge at them, but you've planted an anchor. So then if you get them in a the follow-up system, for two weeks later when you speak to the agent, again, say, oh, I see that property's still on. Are they starting to think about a reduction now because they're not selling it? The follow-up is the absolute king behind all this. So we look at this like a, a, a tap. You want to create a pipeline of deal. The week one when a property comes to the market, you very rarely get a deal done to set that first touch point. So when it's on like that for offers over 85K, that it is, if it's not worth 85K, they're just trying to luck. If you phone them up at this point here and you do that, plant that seed, you say, look, I'm not going to offer because they want over 85K, but I've run my numbers. This is why I'm at that, that, that amount, but I, like, I'll keep in touch with you. So then when you speak to the agent over the following weeks, so ideally, if this is like, say, your magnet up here, you want to be dragging into this pipeline as many deals as you can. So ideally, five plus per week. Because by the time you get down to week four, out of them five, there might only be two of them deals left. This is where it usually starts happening. When you get to week eight and nine, 10, 11, that is when people's motivation shift. They've been on the market for a while, they're not getting offers, they're not getting viewings. But if you've been speaking to the agent regular here, about other deals and say, oh, what's happening with that deal, by the way? Like, I see it's still on the market. Uh, are they thinking of reduction? When this person starts getting motivated here, yeah, but by the time you get down to this week, this five deals can be one. This could be down to now one deal. 
So you've got to keep that pipeline coming week by week. So week one, five deals in there. Week, week two, there's five more on top of it. And then week three, another five more on top of it. So as these filter down, you, as you get down to here, there's still a few left at the bottom. This is why I say to people, you've got to dig your well before your first day. Even if you think you don't need a deal now, you want to start to work now because by the time you probably do need the deal, you've got to start from scratch and you're going to have this pipeline to have to build. That's when people start getting motivation. So if you've done, planted your seed at this point here, like you said, look, I'd only probably give about 70K for this. You get down here and their motivation, they know you want to buy it because you've kept in touch with them. When they start reducing, that's it. You've planted your anchor seed. When they're motivated now, you've got a higher probability, not a definite probability of getting that done. If you keep on feeding that in, like when I was more prolifically sourcing and it was my more front end thing I was doing, that's all we're doing is feeding that pipeline all the time. The agents then will get to know you and then know where, they know where you're at with your price. If they phone you back up and say, do you want to offer on that? You go, yes, yeah, 70K. Like they give you permission to offer a low ball offer. If you low ball offer on everything, they just get pissed off with you. It's not worth low ball offering. It really isn't. We got a deal done. They wanted 67 for it. It's directly to the landlord. I was trying to buy this from the, the landlord for a year and a half, maybe even two years. And they, they wanted 67 for it. As soon as the interest rates were shifting now on a variable rate, I went, yeah, do you want 60 for it now? And they went, yeah, straight away. So that was like probably about a year's worth of me just keeping in touch with them. Sometimes they get to this point here, week seven, they get a sell, and then on week 13, it falls out of bed again. The likelihood is when it falls out of bed, their motivation is even higher, because especially if it got damn valued, you can say, look, my offer is this at this stage, but if you come back to in a couple of weeks' time, we're offering them multiple properties, our budget might not be the same, so we might not be able to offer this in a couple of weeks. So that's adding scarcity, but that's when you're at the offer stage. At this front end part, when it's on for offers over 85 and you might only want to give 70 for it, then you just plant the seed of what you would give for it. I'm going to phone an agent on that one and I'm going to use that psychology I just told you now of trying to plant that seed with them. This is the key behind it. Keep properties coming into there because it's usually down here and beyond where the deals get done. Just phone up a live call for an agent and the idea behind this is to get the psychology this property this property is on for offers over but we don't want to pay over that price so what i'm going to do is plant that expectation seed plant that seed in their head of what i do want to play so then you can then put that into a follow-up if i was to buy this property Property. hi uh, yeah i'm just folding up about a property you've got advertised on right move it's called a vancouver street is that still available yeah. It is, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Is it okay if I ask a few questions? Yes, of course, fair away. Brilliant. Is it the one on the market for 85? That's the one, offers over 85. Yeah. I'm Harvey, by the way. What's your name? My name's Stephanie. Hi, Stephanie. How are you today? I'm very well. How are you? Yeah, I'm fantastic. You sound like you're in a chipper mood. Is it the weekend? The weekend got you in a good vibe? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> That's it, brilliant. So I've got a couple of questions. So straight away, it says offers over 85. I'm, I'm an investor, by the way, and I'm just doing my like, sort of research around this. And I don't want to embarrass them with a low ball offer because it's a waste of everybody's time and I don't want to offend anybody. Yeah. But I'm doing my research and I'm looking from the pictures. It, like, I just can't find the comparables that will match up enough for us to offer above 85. Have you got, I don't suppose, from Right Move Plus or more recent, because I can't find much on there that's giving me the evidence to think by the time we spent the money on there, there's going to be a little bit of a margin in that deal. So has there been any more recent activity that's just not on land registry yet? Um, we saw the property on Vancouver Street um, recently. Mm -hmm. um, it was a two bedroom, the same as this one. Mm -hmm. um, it, this was done up to a very high standard, and it was on the market for offers over one two five, and they achieved just under that. Right. Okay. So that's a that's a better indication than what I'm finding at the moment. Uh, yeah. Okay. But uh, so. It says offers over. Uh, that probably puts us a little bit closer. So I'm, I'm definitely not going to offer because at the moment the numbers I'm doing even at one, I'd have to go away and reanalyze that. Now you've told me one, two, five because yeah. I, I had a lower thing with that. But where where are they with this? With this, have they been getting offers on there? Or are they? They have had a number of offers, but they are looking for a particular figure. Right. I can't give you that figure. Of course it. Um, the, the last offer that they rejected though was 75. Ah, okay, brilliant. Uh, so that gives me a bit of information. Because I was thinking around that ballpark myself, so... Yeah. But I know you can't tell me, and I'm not going to ask you to tell me as well, so I don't want to compromise your uh, I can't, confidentiality with your clients selling yeah. the property. But uh, if I was to offer a smidgen above there, would I be in with a competition with that? I don't want you to tell me where... where... Um, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll definitely go to her and discuss the offer with her. Yeah. Um, 
it was sort of it would give us a way in really but yeah um so so, so, happy to put any offers. so what's the story what's the, the seller's position <clears throat> um well she she bought the property to do it up and just lost interest ah okay so it's half done half not right okay yeah it explains what from the pictures uh uh Okay, yeah, so sitting there empty, burning a hole in her pocket, so she's got a figure, I guess, from what she paid for it as well. Uh, do you know what she paid for it? I'm not asking you, but do, have you got an I don't idea? Have a friend. You don't. So, okay, yeah, no worries. Yeah, I think we're probably a similar sort of value with that. So let me go and run the numbers a bit more deeper on there. But if we was to offer, for example, maybe 76, 77, do you think we're going to be in with a competitive chance, or do you think it's just yeah, a waste of our time? I'll definitely go through with that. You would have to view the property first. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, have a think about it and come back to me and we'll get something booked in for you. Yeah, well, if you can't tell from my accent, I'm from down south. So, yeah. the reason I try to get an indication is I don't want to drive all the way up here, uh, up here, yeah. say, but drive all up to you to uh, view a property if we're a million miles off, if that makes sense. If I can get a yeah. little bit of an indication that she might be in that direction, she don't have to 100% agree. I, mean, I will definitely speak to her about it. That yep. would be a problem, but all she will say is view it and then we'll discuss it after. That. Yeah, so okay, uh, cause, again, I, I, yeah, could, I could get. Yeah, I mean, come back to me, and by all means, I will speak to her. Yeah, if you could have a chat with her, what's your name again? Stephanie, did you say? Steph, yeah. Steph, sorry. Uh, so, Steph, what I'll do is, if you could have a chat with her, say, look, we've got somebody from South that's potentially going to, they're, they're serious buyer, potentially going to come up, but they just want to get an indication, would you be in this ballpark before they drive up or pay somebody? Because we can pay Viewer to view it for us, but that's 70 quid, and then if, if I'm just dreaming, I don't want to waste their time, your time, and my money yeah. at, the, at the same time, so. So, yeah, if you have a chat with her, where, what's a realistic time scale for me to call you back? Uh, well, we're up till four o'clock. I've just made a note of your contact number there, so I'll give you a call. Yeah, um, When she's come back to me, just to save you away from your time, really. Yeah, okay, perfect, perfect. Thanks That's a lot. Fine. All right, then, thanks very much for your call, Harvey. Amazing, thank you, bye-bye. So that was good, there was loads of points of... There was loads of points in there with the psychology with that. So she she straight away, you've got to view it. So that's the big one, the hurdle, you've got to view it. But I live from miles away. Like, like even if I was close, I'd say, look, I don't want to come and view it unless I think we might be in that range. I don't want to offend her, I'm not going to offer that yet. But can you get an indication? So now she's going to go back and get that indication. And another little psychology point that I've done from that as well was, let me know when I can call you back. So I'm putting, like, because you don't want to pester people, but you want to be on them. You know, because a lot of agents are busy, especially if this the market's shifting at the moment, so the leverage is coming back to us. But they're super busy, they'll be like, oh, fuck, if I'm not running around with you. Some agents are just lazy, like, people are just lazy. So then me saying, okay, what is a realistic time for me to phone you back? Can I phone you back in a day, two days? I'm open to four, I'll ring you up now, brilliant, I'll ring you back. So that was a proactive agent. But if she wasn't proactive, I'd say, okay, I'll give you a ring back in two days' time. Your name's Steph. And, and that then's not pestery. Is it okay to ring you back in two days' time? No, no, give me three days, or three days, four days. And then it gives them a deadline to make sure it follows through on where you want to be. But there was a few really good psychology bits in there. The good thing as well, you see me put in, if I was to offer around this, I know, and it's under, it's already there offered at 75, it's offers over 85, and already I'm offering under there without offering. And that is the power of it. The offer without offer is, is just the psychology behind that. I'm just trying to get that gauge and ind indication. So for me now, if I was really interested in that area and interested in that, and you are, note down Steph's name. So every time you phone out, is Steph there? Because you can see she's talkable to. And you just want to find that person you can talk to. Because some people are talkable to, and you just don't bond. Eventually, look, if I phoned up, like, find a deal with Robinson. If I phoned up Robinson's, and I'll get some, she probably in the office today, Claire or Richard, I say, Claire, look, I'm on this one. Can you put an offer forward for it? And I said, they put it in the diary as if I have viewed it. And they put the offer forward. And, I, and especially with Richard, he puts it in his diary, and I even get the follow-up call from the office saying the next day, oh, the progression call, how did that viewing go? Yeah, it's fantastic, thanks, I'm gonna put an offer forward, even though I haven't viewed it. So when you build that relationship with them, they can see you're serious. They will, some, some vendors, like by the sounds of it, the vendors like, no, I want you to view it. So some vendors, they might force you on that. But again, if you know, they can, like if that property is worth 120, and it's 77K, Oh, that's worth going to view now, isn't it? You know, like if they were saying like we want 95k for it or 90k because it's offers above 85 and it's 120 and it needs 15k's off of work, it's not worth viewing. That's why I, I usually play that game with as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about a thousand more? 500 pound more? A thousand more? And I start doing it in a laughing way and I usually laugh like you are. And I say, you're not really going to make me go up 500 quid each time later. <laughs> and then, then they usually, they laugh. It's like you laugh there. That, it's just humour. And they laugh. They go, yeah, go on. If you offer above 76, you're going to get it. 
Yeah, go, thank you very much. And rather than going in, no, can I offer 76 or can you tell me what they offered? It, it's just, it's just that, that my approach. But sometimes you just don't bomb with people, especially if you've got an out of town accent as well. Sometimes they think you cheeky bugger coming up buying all our properties. Wow. Like, in there, I had to, like, to like, wing that a little bit because I, I didn't know what the end value was and, and I didn't know where the numbers was. But the more you know, the more you can justify. If I said, look, we can only find a power was 110. She wants half us over 85 and it needs a 15K refurb. It just don't stack, does it? Between don't legals, blah, blah. And that's when you add in that part of, but uh, have you got anything on Right Move Plus that's not come through to land registry? So who's going to call an agent next? Don't make me pick no, someone. That was my property. I'll go after Jazz. <laughs> 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 Look, he's volunteering. <laughs> I think that's got to be you then, Callum, seeing as you was volunteering other people, mate. Yeah, more, more. <laughs> <laughs> think in your head, we just want to get an indication. This is just a... Uh, a research call of just getting some information. This is not me trying to offer, not trying to bid or anything like that. To get a feel for the agent, how they are, and get an indication of where they would, where a price would be so I can then think to myself, is this worth us pursuing and, and watching? Or just putting my photo up. If that's selling on the market in five weeks' time, and you know, oh, okay, like I spoke to you five weeks ago, Steph, that property's still sitting there. Obviously, the 75k person can't, can't, are they still there? Like, what happened? Or, or did she not want to come down at 75k? That conversation's open then. And it's easier because she's already told me 75k. And she might say, yeah, that 75k buyer's not there anymore because they bought something else. Well, well our offer's probably going to be a little bit lower now because we've also bought something else and our budget's not there. Where do you think? Do you think they might now look at 73 because it's been on the market for ages? And again, I'm still not offering at this stage. It's the most powerful thing I learned in, like when, when we was buying like more all the time, it was just a script that got us everything all the time as well. It's all about reps. The more and more you do this, the more comfortable you get with it. If you want to be deal sourcing, phone up f fucking 10 agents a week. Even if it's off patch, like just get used to speaking to them. And the more you get, the reason I, I was nervous coming in front of everybody, there's a camera on me as well. So it's like, oh, fucking hell, like, say you get that wrong. And I was nervous even at the start, being totally honest, like doing that bit, trying to do that friendly bit with her as well. And I started like a little bit, uh, uh, I couldn't get my words out. <laughs> but the reality, I could do that under camera is because I've done it so many times. And it's just reps. You want to get better at anything, you just got to put the reps in. Even if you're naturally pretty good, you put the reps in and you, un you study the psychology and then put the practice in loads and loads of times. Direct offender, first of all, as you understand, it takes a while to get the, the algorithms for the ads to understand what you want it to do. But the payoff's like probably a little bit better because off-market stuff does sell easier. But it's more low-hanging fruit. It'll get you in quicker. You can, m most of the deals that I've sold have been online or from agents that have come to us before and most of the Matty's deals come to me from agents before they just hit the market but they're agents, they're not from direct to vendor advertising. The do guards do fucking, how many deals do the do guards do every month? <laughs> yeah exactly, it's a fucking lot. Like, most of their deals come from agents. That, yeah, 40 deals and legals. That gives you some indication. And they don't do one bit of direct to vendor marketing. Once you get prolific with agents, they just start feeding your deals. Agents want an easier job. Again, this is a really good script at the start. If you want a deal source, you, you always put in that part, like, for my, I didn't add that in a minute ago, so that's a really good point for myself and one of my investment partners. I, hi, I'm Callum. I'm an investor, and we buy on behalf of myself and sometimes investment partners if they don't suit my criteria. So again, you plant that seed so it's not a surprise to them when you get to the offer stage.